Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about penalties and whether they're more about luck or skill. But before we dive in, take a look at this clip. If you're a fan of the Champions League, you might remember it. It was the 2008 final and if John Terry scores, Chelsea wins their first Champions League ever. And this happened. For Chelsea, Terry's big moment, but no! A reprieve for Manchester United and John Terry, heartbroken, distraught. I remember watching it live years ago and wondering why did it slip? In fact, why do professional, world level football players slip so often while taking penalties? The question stuck with me, and while doing some research for this video, I noticed that it happens way more often than it should. Can this be the most slippery zone in the football field? In a way, yes, and some players even work hard to destroy the terrain, but players should be able to predict and avoid it. So this makes me wonder, is it possible that for a brief moment of time, a football player forgets how to shoot? When we're watching high performers, we expect them to be excellent, excellent. or at least be consistent in their performance. But this requires a mental state of fluidity, which is very hard to achieve when you're under pressure. Maybe something like this has even happened to you in the past, being in a moment of extreme anxiety and starting to perform a bit differently from what you normally would, forgetting the basics and becoming too much aware of every little movement. This is a psychological phenomenon known as choking. And it happens to top performers when they become overwhelmed with the expectation put upon them. Mastering a sport or any complex task is about making the movements fluid, thoughtless. It's about repeating so much that you have muscle memory. It's about training so often that you can do it with your eyes closed. When this happens, your knowledge becomes so rooted that it's part of your implicit system. On the other hand, the explicit system happens when you're in the learning phase, when you have to be careful, slow, experimental about your every movement. Unfortunately, it also happens when people start overthinking their actions and the outcomes. Now this begs the question, why is it that some players choke while others execute beautiful panenkas in World Cup finals? Well, everyone is different and some people have personality traits that make them better at performing under pressure. There is a personality trait called neuroticism and it relates to how people experience and manage their own humor, the feelings of anxiety, stress, anger. And people with higher levels of neuroticism perform worse under pressure. They are also more affected by something that psychologists call ironic processes of mental control. Basically, it's when you push something down only to have its surface even stronger. An example of performing poorly in a decisive moment happened to Roberto Baggio. He was one of the greatest players to ever play for Italy and considered the best player in the world in 1993. And one year after that, he found himself in a penalty shootout in the World Cup final against Brazil. Missing the shot would mean defeat for Italy. So what does psychology suggest? Well, it suggests you should avoid having your players with higher neuroticism shooting in intense situations, like penalties that will decide the game. So who should shoot in those final vital moments? For every problem, there's a solution. And that solution is called narcissists. These are the people that by nature of their personality consider themselves to be exceptional performers. Even though the literature clearly shows that narcissists don't outperform non-narcissists in any kind of task. Except when the stakes are high. When there's an opportunity to shine, narcissists tend to perform better than any other personality type. But how do I know if I have a narcissist on my team? Well, first of all, if it's a football team, you will have a narcissist on the team. But there's this one funny trick that you can use to find out if someone is a narcissist or not. It's quite funny, you can use with your friends or family if you wish. And the trick is very simple. You just 
ask them. Yes, it's that simple. A narcissist isn't ashamed of being perceived as a narcissist. They're actually proud. It's another chance to stand out as special. But back to penalties. They are not only about personalities. They have so many times been called a lottery because there are so many factors at play. In fact, there are more factors than we could fit into a single video. And because there are so many factors at play, we'll focus today on one that is rarely taken into account, but I believe it's super important. The unconscious mind. And what I mean by unconscious mind is that place in your brain that accesses information in your environment and uses it to make decisions without you being aware of it. And in fact, a big part of our decisions happens here, in zones that allow for faster decisions. Experts on any topic can analyze situations in fractions of seconds, even without being aware of it. Like this ninja cutting a bullet in half. In the face of a very narrow slice of experience, an expert can extrapolate what's happening and act upon it. He can see the patterns. This concept is best described by Malcolm Gladwell under the term thin slicing. Think of it as big data processed unconsciously and immediately by the brain. An example that I love comes from Dr. Gottman. They used to call him Dr. Love. He was a psychologist that worked with couples for over 20 years. He could predict if couples were going to be together with 94% accuracy just from looking at 5 minutes of interaction between these couples. And this happened because for over 20 years he filmed couples interacting, analyzed them and looked at the data. Now let's translate this into the football pitch. Between the penalty spot and the goal, the ball will travel roughly 11 meters. Imagine that the ball travels at 100 km an hour. The ball will travel at 27.78 meters per second, taking around 0.4 seconds to reach the goal. A professional goalkeeper can react in less than 0.2 seconds, giving him the remaining 0.2 seconds for jumping time. And looking at the numbers, it would be pretty obvious that the goalkeeper cannot wait for the ball to be shot to know its direction to then jump. Still, this doesn't mean that it is a lottery. Of course, some goalkeepers will have predetermined their jumping side, based on statistics from the opponent, tactics or even personal beliefs. But some goalkeepers use their unconscious mind. They decide where to jump while the other player is running, based on his direction, the way he looks at the goal, according to his hips and legs. This understanding of trajectory and speed in decision making comes from years of practice. It comes from the need to anticipate your opponent. A strong example of this is Clarence Seedorf. He was a world-class player with an incredible accuracy, who strangely happens to have failed his most important penalties. Nobody can tell you for sure why he failed his shots, but in my theory, Seedorf's problem was that he would allow himself to be read by the goalkeepers. Some goalkeepers, like Claudio Bravo, are experts at this type of unconscious reading. This is the semi-final of the FIFA Confederations Cup 2017. The Portuguese players have a very low morale after a terrible game. Still, they reach the penalties, and Claudio defended three in a row. Is it luck, or was there something else? The Portuguese goalkeeper Ricardo did the same in 2006 in the World Cup quarter-final against England. He guessed the right side every time. This time, England was the one with a low moral after having lost to Portugal in 2004 on penalties. England here, just like Seedorf in his late career, could be the victim of another psychological phenomenon, the Golem Effect. The Golem Effect is the opposite of the Pygmalion Effect. The Golem shows up when there's expectations of a poor performance placed on someone. And of course, the Golem, which is a psychological substract, leads them to perform poorly. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy created by the compound effect created by the previous failures. Now, the worst part about penalty shootouts is that you cannot train for them. Yes, you can shoot at targets, but you can never replicate the real-life conditions, the pressure, the expectations. Penalty shootouts are so intense because anything can happen. They are a reminder that sometimes you can be brilliant, you can pull your heart out, you can be hardworking and still fail. 
they remind us of our own unpredictable nature. That sometimes you hit the bar and it goes out, and sometimes you hit the bar and it goes in. Sometimes panenka fails, and sometimes the pitch really is slippery. Sometimes you make a great shot and the goalkeeper makes a great defense. And four years after the initial clip I showed you, Chelsea was again on the Champions League final. And the game was going to be decided on penalties, again. This time, Terry didn't have to shoot and Chelsea won the game. Yes, there is luck in penalties, but you can increase your chances of being lucky. My name is Mario and thanks for watching.